six R. Six R means six different R. Okay, so here rehosting. Maybe you might have heard about the terms, but you might not have understood what exactly these uh, are, are the difference between them. Okay, rehosting, repurchasing, replatforming, refactoring, and uh, retaining and retiring. Okay, so there are six different R. So yeah, all of them start with R, right? That's why they call it as six R's. In some organization, they will use 5R or 4R also. They might not take some specific strategies, but these are the general 6R strategy that you can take whenever you want to do a uh, migration or transformation or uh, modernization. You can take any of this particular approach. Okay, these are all very easy to understand. Okay, so when you say rehosting, we are changing the host, meaning we are changing the server hardware. Okay, we are moving from one company's server hardware to another company's server hardware, or we are moving from one server hardware to another hardware. That is the rehosting. See, for example, if I am uh, migrating from on prem uh, hardware, server hardware to Azure server hardware, that is called uh, rehosting. Okay, to Azure server hardware, this is all rehosting because we are just only changing the hardware. The virtual machine will remain the same, the VM will be untouched. Okay, we are just migrating as such. Okay, so the VM layer and the operating system application will be remaining as such. So replatforming is actually changing the platform. We are see here you can some people uh, use some easier terms, simple terms. Okay, simple terms for uh, rehosting is lift and shift. They call it as lift and shift approach. They just migrate the virtual machine. They just move the VM from one server hardware to another server hardware. Replatforming, we can say lift we are making some tinkering uh, like maybe you might be upgrading the platform version from dotnet 4.5 to dotnet 5 or maybe a java version x to java version y we might be doing some tinkering and shifting it so we are actually migrating to a platform in azure rather than infrastructure as a service movement we are migrating to possibly like you are changing to azure sql databases or azure app services we are just repackaging the code so there is a code change that will happen this is they call it as repackaging to to support the package or to support the code in the cloud space there is no major application overhaul meaning the, we are not completely changing the application architecture or uh, nothing we are doing we, we are making some small code change to be present on the azure platform so we are uh, bringing the application to azure platform either azure web apps or azure app services or azure sql database we are just bringing the services or application to azure platform level definitely there is no major application overhaul you should not completely change everything so it is just a small tinkering tinkering means you know right like you're just doing some small changes in order to make it compatible with the new platform the azure platform so you are not doing any major architectural change here we are not doing any application overhauling here so definitely like the, the, there is a small code change so here uh, definitely we need to involve uh, the application development team without their uh, help we cannot do a replatforming. So app development or programming team is involved to make some minor changes, okay? So repurchasing means we are dropping the on-premises environment and uh, shopping from the cloud. We are going and uh, running some uh, uh, application on uh, either Azure VM or Azure app services or whatever. So it, this is called drop and shop. Okay, we are uh, dropping whatever we have in the on-premises, but again here we need to have a lot of investment, right? So it is like uh, you have to go and uh, uh, invest a lot of money in the cloud side, and we are going and purchasing it. So see, rehosting it's more of a move to infrastructure as a service approach. Replatform is moving to platform as a service approach. Okay, so repurchase means it can be anything. Okay, you can shop a VM or you can go and shop a web app or you can go and shop a SQL database. You are dropping whatever you have in the on-premises and you are going with a complete uh, uh, new technology in uh, the cloud space. Okay, it can be infrastructure as a service or it can be a pass or it can be DR as a service or whatever, right? It can be any, any technology. So next one is re-architecting. This is the most complicated one. So we are going and... Uh, uh, changing the complete code to be uh, made suitable with the cloud. There is a very high cost involved here and there is a very high risk because we are uh, taking a lot of time to uh, uh, because like it is going to be a very high uh, service in, uh, disruption here because we are spending time to 
completely change the functionality to suit it in the cloud or we are doing an application modernization here we are refactoring here we are completely doing the development from the scratch here you are completely changing for the new uh, business opportunity or we are just going towards the new uh, modern way of operating business so this is called as modernization or refactoring concept this is the most toughest one and the complex one where the enterprise architect is involved developer is involved all the business stakeholders are involved so the next one is retaining see some application you might have recently uh, invested you might have recently purchased a license uh, or you might have recently purchased a server hardware or you might have purchased a uh, renew the licensing or you might have invested in something okay so uh, in that case customer will not be uh, happy to move those workload to the cloud so we might revisit that after two years or five years once after the license is over or once after the current purchase is completed once after they uh, get back the investment in terms of revenue then they will go and think about migrating those workload so currently we are deferring the migration we are retaining it and we will be migrating it at a later time see while doing all these discovery assessment and stuff we will get to know that there are some servers which has been running in our data center without any uh, uh, purpose at all okay there are some servers they will identify like maybe out of if you are if you are assessing 100000 servers there will be at least 30 to 40 server no one knows why it is running okay so you will have to tell them that there is nothing we will power off the server we'll uh, maybe uh, keep it idle for two weeks and uh, uh, like cool off period as they call they'll call it as cool down period they will power off for two weeks and so on and they will go and uh, take a backup full backup and decommission those servers okay there will be a lot of such uh, uh, systems that will be there in your en environment no one will be knowing why it is running they might have created it for some poc or whatever and they, they might have left it like that okay so these are the different approaches that we can go and take when you are planning for any migration or transformation or a modernization see what they will do is they will put all the ci okay configuration item server one server two database one database two application one application two so all these information will be put in a kind of tracker or in a kind of migration uh, tracker and we will be going and uh, entering the approach migration or modernization approach we have to say this server will be done using rehosting approach this server this database will be done using replatforming approach this application will be migrated to rehosting model or some application will be migrated to a kind of uh, uh, replatforming or rearchitecture model so we need to kind of map all the resources with a specific approach okay this is the kind of tool set or uh, you, you might have a dashboard which will give you visibility on which server can be migrated when which server is easy to migrate it gives you the complexity and priority information by putting all the ca information in the tracker that is what the, you know, the migration team will generally do okay so any questions on uh, these six different uh, migration path or method no stand good oh interesting okay so no question means it is good to proceed further okay so okay so if you are a solution architect or if you are an enterprise architect we need to kind of do a kind of discovery and assessment in uh, two aspect okay many people many architect will fail uh, by doing I mean doing the assessment in two different approach see for example we should have to do a quantitative measurement we call it as quantitative analysis also we have to do a qualitative analysis i'll, I'll give you some examples no worries okay so when you do a, an assessment or a, a analysis some people will do only quantitative some people will do only qualitative and they will miss the other area so quantitative means it is like measuring the capacity like what is the current uh, uh, cpu what is the current uh, memory what is the current consumption uh, what is the current uh, use usage okay so whether in terms of performance is there any bottleneck what is the amount of network traffic that is going on what are the uh, version compatibility okay what are the current versions running are, are there any uh, uh, kind of uh, old uh, uh, machines okay whether <clears throat> how much is the current uh, consumption 
okay all these are quantitative we are measuring we are understanding the data platform what is the version we are running what is the cpu usage memory usage what is the service usage which server is talking to which server how much traffic is flowing so these are all something we need to measure it in a quantitative way but qualitative analysis is the legacy information the os version uh, whether uh, how critical uh, uh, this application is for the business how important is the uh, application for their business where which which particular uh, vendors are dependent on that okay so dependency with uh, third party vendor or who exactly manages it are there any process dependency whether we need to involve some specific vendor or whether uh, there has to be additional investment that is available whether uh, the current end users are happy about the service whether there are any uh, uh, performance issues that are currently going on so we need to understand from the qualitative way also so how the database schema is currently developed are there any issues with the end user experience so we need to kind of qualitatively do the assessment also some people will only think about quantity and they will start the migration there also there will be a lot of challenges at a later time so we need to think assessment from two different aspects we need to collect some qualitative information and quantitative information so that your uh, migration can be quicker you can uh, have a great success ratio if you have all this information right so uh, you, you guys are able to follow me like what exactly i'm referring to qualitative and quantitative mm -hmm. qualitative yep. yeah good okay so qualitative means you need to understand the business priority like what is the business roadmap what is the investment they have on their uh, application whether this application has got a lot of investment what is the current operational cost what is the current uh, uh, investment or whether they are de deploying the application using agile model or whether they are deploying using some devops model or what kind of model they are using currently to create the application how frequently the application is changing so whether uh, there is some devops uh, implementation the change frequency of the application so these are all something which we need to definitely understand and uh, the other area is uh, the qualitative the numbers okay how much how many users are accessing the website how much uh, time it is taking to load the page how much time it is uh, how much time the users are spending on a particular page okay so like um, numbers okay it's all uh, spending on a particular page spending on a particular language what is the language of the application what kind of development platform they have used what is the db version okay so i've already mentioned the version but anyway so you, you can capture all of those okay which system is talking to which system the dependency mapping uh, okay i think we are captured almost all of them okay so you need to do a uh, kind of approach assessment in uh, both quantitative and uh, a qualitative way okay so let's see uh, we have covered the tools we have covered the phases we have covered what is needed to justify okay and uh, okay what is the other aspect you might think see uh, i talked about tools right so uh, from customer standpoint what do you think they will ask you? See, if I go and say I, I'm going to use, uh, for example, Carbonite or Zerto or Azure Migrate for migration, what might be the question you think uh, the customer will ask? Ooh. Just think, okay, see, you guys are senior, more senior people, right? Uh -huh. Everyone, security yeah, probably the uh, approach for the migration or whatever the, the okay. Fine. Or approach or things. Okay, because approach. you know they, they, they for example we have a thousand application and we have to segregate the four quadrant uh, kind of uh, you know business critical non-business critical and uh -huh. uh, you know some of the things that we have to you know don't touch for the uh the immediate migration because you uh -huh. know uh some of things we have to migrate for immediately then some of things no need to migrate for some time and those things we have to you know probably the 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 business clients they, they are looking for correct so those are all something which we are uh, talking about the uh, approach right so what i'm asking here yeah, is yeah. see i'll tell you so uh, 
uh, approach is already covered so licensing details they will ask how much licenses is needed what yes. kind of cost is uh, involved and very important thing that will ask is whether we need to deploy any agent or whether uh, it is a agentless migration or whether it is a agentless discovery or whether it is a uh, assessment that you are going uh, doing whether it needs any additional uh, security ports to be opened or any kind of uh, uh, security changes need to be happen or what kind of impact the uh, these tools are going to bring in so that is what the customer will be uh, understanding right they want to be uh, okay. prepared they want to understand the readiness what is the cost estimation what in order to do the dependency mapping and analysis so you cannot just like that uh, seeing at the environment you cannot understand anything you need to put together some yeah. tools you need to put together some uh, integration then only you will be able to do it so that's where you need to understand which tools listed here are agent and agentless see for example i will say like uh, azure migrate is the primary tool which we are going to use right so azure migrate can work agent based or agentless based on the source uh, environment if it is vmware or hyper v or if it is aws so some can be done agentless some can be done uh, agent with the agent similarly current technology it can be again agent based and agentless there are uh, two options that are also provided and if you're talking about unify cloud it also provides you agent and uh, agentless option so move here same thing zerto same thing okay so you have uh, uh, different tools which can help you to migrate the workload with uh, agent and agentless see current technology is mainly primarily agentless that is the uh, most robust tool okay for server migration and all either it is vmware or hyper v or physical or other cloud these technology will support all of them that is another thing right whether we will we need to use different tools for uh, uh, different technology then that also will be a question from the customer whether uh, the coverage or the scope whether we need to use multiple tools or one tool will cover all of them so this will cover all of them okay so core and technology will be agentless and it will cover almost vmware hyper v physical other public cloud and so on and on the other side whether it will cover windows linux and other workload okay so even the core and technology it will cover windows linux and unix also some unix can also can be uh, migrated and uh, cut over in with minimal downtime and if you talk about uh, the carbonite and other tools it is again uh, okay carbonite is agent based it doesn't support agentless okay so that's where uh, there are some tools which uh, might be uh, challenging so there are some specific tools okay rackware is there right so rackware we generally use for some specific workload for example if i have a zen virtualization or if i have a kvm virtualization if i want to migrate it to azure then uh, rackware is a very powerful tool okay so uh, some for some technology some organization provide you specialized tool rackware is primarily uh, helpful for zen virtualized virtual machine or kvm uh, vms okay for those you can use rackware similarly there are some tools which can be used for some specific uh, purposes so carbonite can be definitely used for all of these okay vmware uh, windows and linux all those things okay you need to understand their uh, approach understand the licensing cost information whether it is agent or agentless or what what kind of impact you need to change what kind of changes we need to do whether the data will be going out of the data center data will be taken out of the data center or uh, whether they will be doing the assessment and storing the data within the data center so all these questions as a customer uh, they will ask you okay we need to provide answers what kind of for example the, someone will say like i have a, uh, a lot of suze linux server whether your tool will support so we need to tell like yeah the, these tools like current tech and uh, carbonite all these thing, things will support suze linux so you need to identify the compatibility okay so uh, the approach the whether the versions are supportable what, what how many tools we need to do the coverage and stuff right so any other course any other uh, area which i'm missing here yeah data production policies also we have mm -hmm. to there is, there is one of the thing uh, because uh, some of the data we can't store it in some regions uh, due to some security purpose right okay correct okay that is true okay so um, okay good so these are the important aspects we need to kind of uh, discuss with uh, the, the customer okay so this is another important thing okay so before we get into the migration or uh, we have completed the discovery and assessment and we are doing a planning so during the planning we can also fast track or help migration to succeed or complete much quicker so what kind of things you will do